Tonight, Google announces Android for wearables. The NSA is recording 100% of a foreign country's phone calls. And would you follow orders from a robot? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 46 for Tuesday, March 18th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,000 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash tn2. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash tn2. I'm Sarah Lane, and joining me now to talk about our top story is Joseph Volpe, senior editor with Engadget. Hello, Joseph. Hello, Sarah. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm very excited about Android Wear. It's a big, big, big topic today. You wrote a story about it, as did pretty much everybody else. So, so what That's is right. Android Wear? So basically, this is Google finally saying, you know what? We want to own the wearables category, be it smartwatches, um, you know, eyewear like glass, or anything else that developers can sort of think of for the future of wearables. I mean, it is, it's a brand new category. It's still growing. So we don't really know um, to the extent of what wearables will grow into. But, you know, um, Google's really big sort of proponent, Samsung, pulled back recently with their new smartwatches, the Gears, which rely on Tizen, not Android. So this is Google's way of basically saying, no, we want to, we want to own this the same way we sort of own um, the smartphone sector. So LG already has a teaser video for the G Watch. They say it will be available in the second quarter of this year. Right. Motorola did the same, the Moto 360. The company said it'll be available this summer. Uh, it, at least in, in Motorola's case, lots of emphasis on not only the round design, but the quality of the, the, the construction. Seemed somewhat Apple-like. Does anything grab you here? I, do, do you think that... Uh, the, the reality of these, because a lot of this is just conceptual at this point, is actually right. what we're going to get? Well, I would say that was sort of the first thing I found sort of alarming today, which was there was an overwhelming response towards the Moto 360 in comparison to the LG G Watch. You know, just, just from LG's own admission, the G Watch is sort of a lower end um, product that's going to run the Android Wear platform. But, you know, Motorola is putting such an emphasis on premium design saying this is harkening back to the classic timepiece you can see from that sort of round digital watch face. But at the same time, with, with all this excitement, they have to deliver. And saying that it's coming out in summer, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm only, I can only assume that they have something close to final that looks like this. Um, otherwise, they're going to have a, a pretty uh, disappointed sort of uh, user base, or at least um, they're going to disappoint a lot of the community. One of the, I had to laugh when I was watching, I believe it was LG's video, uh, Little Situations, the guy's on a bus, somebody texts him, asks if he's close, and he answers, you know, he's on a <laughs> bus, he's not the only one on the bus. Yeah. Does, it, does it seem weird to you that we're supposed to be buying into the idea of talking to something that we're wearing? Is that, is that the future and it's just odd now? I think that's the use case that we can most easily sell to the average consumer that's sort of, you know, trepidatious when it comes to new tech technologies and adopting them. Um, I certainly do not think that we are going to be holding our wrists up to, to our faces to talk into them. I mean, that's just awkward and it, it'll put strain on your arm. You know, I wrote a piece a while ago talking about the form factors that we need to see if the, the smartwatch is ever to overtake, um, you know, the smartphone. And we're going to need flexible uh, displays that, that are more landscape oriented. Um, so I don't think that's, I think it's going to be a lot of sensor tracking in terms of like temperature and, and heart rate and health and pedometer um, and notifications. I think that's the, the main benefit to a smartwatch. So the SDK is available to developers. Uh, they can integrate, obviously, Android Wear into their apps and devices. Is there anything not so obvious that you're hoping is going to come to the platform once we actually start to see these physical devices? I mean, the, I think the thing that we have to consider is that since this is supposedly running uh, a version of Google Now, which is that sort of prescient uh, personal assistant um, that you have on certain Android uh, phones where, you know, it'll tell you the upcoming weather, your commute, um, if your flight's uh, on schedule or, not, or, or whatnot, something like that. That requires a special low power core to run. And, you know, Motorola did that with the Moto X. They crafted special low power cores to, to keep that version of the screen on and active and not kill the battery life. 
I don't know that you can do that with a device as small as a smartwatch. So that's what I'm really curious to see when we get a lot more concrete details and actually see these devices, um, you know, in the flesh. Well, Joseph, thank you so much for talking with us, explaining a little bit more about what we can expect in 2014. It's going to be a smartwatch year, uh, whether thank that's you. good or bad. Tell folks where <laughs> they can keep up with you online. Yeah, if uh, you want to catch uh, any of the news that comes out of Engadget, just go to Engadget.com or you can go to my bio page. Uh, I'm also on Twitter at J-R-V-O-L-P-E. That's J-R Volpe. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for being with us on TN2. Thank you so much. Have a good night. You too. Coming up, the NSA records 100% of foreign countries' phone calls. We'll tell you a little bit more about how that works. Apple's new-ish releases. Google's dropping voice. Robots are overloading pressure humans to work. I will explain that as best I can in just a few moments. But first, let's thank lynda.com for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. With lynda.com's easy-to-follow video tutorials, you can learn at your own pace, on your own terms, from experts in lots of industries. With a subscription, you'll get unlimited access to thousands of online video courses covering all sorts of technical skills, creative techniques, business strategies. Maybe you want to improve your photography skills. Maybe you want to learn new software, boost your web design know-how, or learn programming. At lynda.com, you can do all of that. You can find top quality videos on literally hundreds of different subjects. Watch from your computer, your tablet, your mobile device, the instructors are all professionals, they're experts, they're passionate about teaching, and each course is structured so that you can either learn from start to finish or jump in at any point to find a quick answer. It's only $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library, or for $37.50 a month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which includes exercise files. You can also try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial. L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N, the number two, to access the entire library, over 2,000 courses free for seven days. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2. Let's hop over to the day's big stories now in the tech feed. According to a classified summary supplied by former National Security Agency co contractor Edward Snowden to sources speaking with the Washington Post, the NSA has built a surveillance system capable of recording 100% of a foreign country's telephone calls, which allows the agency to rewind conversations up to 30 days. So collection systems are recording every recordable conversation throughout a country, storing them, billions of them, in a 30-day rolling buffer that then clears the oldest calls as new ones come in. This is according to the summary. The program is called Mystic, began in 2009, the Washington Post is withholding information about which specific countries the U.S. has employed Mystic at the request of U.S. officials. Although, in a statement, Caitlin Hayden, who's a spokeswoman for the National Security Council, declined to comment on specific alleged intelligence activities, but said that new or emerging threats are, quote, often hidden within the large and complex system of modern global communications, and the United States must consequently collect signals, intelligence in bulk, in certain circumstances in order to identify these threats. Well, moving on now, Apple has added a new iPhone to its lineup, a 5C with 8 gigabytes of storage. Previously, the smallest model was 16 gigabytes for the 5C. The new model is only available in the UK, France, Germany, Australia, and China, at least for now. And this new 8 gigabyte model might boost sales as a lower cost option that's more attractive than the 8 gig iPhone 4S. Although the 4S is still an option in those markets where the 8 gig 5C has been introduced. Apple is also reintroducing the iPad 4 of sorts. It's replacing the iPad 2. That was the last remaining device that used Apple's outdated 30-pin connector. The iPad 4 successor has, of course, the current Lightning connector. It's in line with the iPad Air, the iPad Mini, and the iPad Mini Retina in the iPad line. 9 to 5 Google is reporting that Google Voice is getting the official axe soon with its functionality incorporated into the G Plus Hangouts app on both Android and iOS. So VoIP to phones is said to be integrated into the Hangouts iOS and Android apps so that users can make and receive VoIP calls directly from a Google phone number. Google recently allowed Hangouts to take over SMS on Android phones, so this move would seem consistent with the company organizing all telephony communications into Hangouts. Again, no word on an official switch date yet. 
And finally, researchers at the Human Computer Interaction Lab at the University of Manitoba in Canada that were studying human robot interaction and obedience have found that human subjects will follow a robot's orders to perform tasks more than they would another human even when they don't want to. Human subjects were told to perform a number of tasks, anything from singing to renaming large batches of files. The researchers explained that, quote, even after trying to avoid the task or engaging in arguments with the robot, participants still, often reluctantly, obeyed its commands and that these findings highlight that robots can indeed pressure people to do things that they would rather not do, supporting the need for ongoing research into obedience to robotic authorities. Yikes. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us with all feedback and questions and comments at TN2 at twit.tv. Our next newscast is tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.